Yep. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Oh, it's an absolute horse. Now, I don't have a net for whatever reason. But. Uh, there we go. That's a rainbow trout. Hooks right on the top of his lip. Excellent. Very small rainbow trout. <laughs> Probably smaller than average, I reckon, this fish. Um, most fish are probably going to be about 200 or 250 grams. This one's probably about 180 grams or whatever. But anyway, that's your fish on worms under the float. Back he goes. So now that we've caught a fish, I will tell you where I am, what I'm doing. Um, I'm not in Tasmania, so I am in Victoria, I'm fishing in Marysville. Marysville is a lovely place in the Yarra Valley uh, in Victoria, not far from Melbourne. And this is a great little pond, and the reason why I'm bothering filming me catching a bunch of little fish in this pond uh, is because I feel like Tasmania should be doing a similar thing. So in Tasmania, you're not allowed to fish during the close season at all, um, bar a couple of select locations. In Victoria, it's different. You're allowed to fish in lakes still because trout don't breed in lakes. That makes a lot of sense to me. You're not allowed to fish in rivers. There's a river behind me, can't fish in that. Um, but you can fish in these lakes. And an opportunity over winter time when you can't fish in uh, the rivers is to put lots of fish in lakes to encourage kids on holidays um, and beginner fishermen to come out and catch a few fish and it is fairly easy so what I'm doing with the worms um, you don't need worms power bait is probably the preferred bait um, corn kernels uh, bread marshmallows whatever you can find that smells uh, will be good bait so natural bait isn't actually your preferred bait generally because these fish are hatchery raised um, that fish that I just caught I mentioned then it was a little bit small um, a bit smaller than average but Normally they're a little bit bigger than that, so not massive fish, but it keeps you fun for kids and beginners and I still enjoy it. So um, I feel like Tasmania should do a similar thing where you can fish in lakes and they can stock small ponds, urban waterways um, with these catchable sized fish. But uh, anyway, I'll keep fishing, see how many I can catch. This shouldn't take long. <laughs> I've got a worm under a float, which is kind of Probably the most standard fishing technique on the planet. There's little bust ups going on out just further out than where my float is. But it shouldn't take long. There's quite a few fish coming up to the surface out there. Maybe. Alright, look, we'll start again. I'll cast further out. Alright guys, so this is the rig, a little float, most basic little float that you can get down to a small hook and a small worm and basically that should be trout written all over it. The fish is right next to my float, it's rushing around on the surface, nibbles, nibbles. Little nibbles. Oh, <laughs> you see that? <laughs> oh, that was an energetic cast. I mean, set of the hook. What is going on? We caught ourselves a tree. I think I probably got a little bit too excited there. <laughs> Lost the worm. Alright, so we'll get another worm on. 
Yeah, just put the hook through the worm twice. Leaving lovely like taily bits there. So it looks quite natural. The fish are still going to be uh, chewing on those bits, but um, kind of when the when you float fishing, uh, if the float's just kind of bobbing up and down on the same spot, don't set the hook. Wait for it to go fully under, because that's when you know that the fish have actually grabbed it completely, and pulled it under. Or if it starts swimming, if the float starts swimming away, even if it's on the surface, then they've obviously got it in their mouth, they're not just like nibbling at it. So it's just bobbing up and down, I don't know if... There we go. Ah, I missed him. We've still got the worm. Still on the... I'll just put it... Put the worm back on a bit better. There we go. But it, that was, what, 15, 20 seconds? And those fish kind of just all out there. 10, 15 metres out. Kind of in the middle of this tiny little pond. Like, that is the pond, that is it. There's nothing. <laughs> it's not some big reservoir. And it is just stacked high with fish. You could pretty much walk across this pond, I reckon. There's that many fish in it. I can see the fish, I'm getting bites, haven't caught any. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I was going to start talking about something, but here we go. Here we go. Now, if this isn't enjoyable fishing for uh, beginners or young kids, and I don't know what is. I still enjoy it. I'm not a young kid or a beginner. Oh, I still like catching fish. Who doesn't? Look at this. This one's um, average size. So I mentioned that the last one is a bit small. Uh, this one's a lot more average sized. That's a really beautiful fish. Look at that. Look at those colours. An excellent looking fish. That's really nice. Really cool looking rainbow trap. Grab the hook out. I'll put him back so someone else can have fun catching him. Off he goes. There we go, there's another fish straight away. But um, what I was about to say, I was rudely interrupted by said fish. So these uh, waterways that I've mentioned, they're, they're, well, all lakes in Victoria are still open for fishing. They don't close for the trout close season uh, because trout don't breed in lakes, makes a lot of sense. So uh, in Victoria, there's over 85 waterways that are just like this, quite small, um, which they stock for the school holidays. So it's uh, the July holidays now, school holidays, and Victoria has just stocked 30,000 catchable rainbow trout into 85 different waterways. So if you just compare that to what Tasmania does, it's just so much far above what uh, Tasmania does in terms of stocking. Um, and it does provide the opportunities and it provides uh, tourism dollars to these rural towns and urban areas uh, for people to come fishing. Like, it just makes sense to me to have areas like this available, available in Tasmania. Um, but anyway, so that's fish number two. Apparently there's 950 fish in here. <laughs> Probably a fairly low strike rate, but we'll keep going. Here we go. Oh, there's a bite. There's a bite. Yes. Yes. Yes, it was. Here we go. Solid fish. Alright. That didn't take long. Uh, fish number um, three. Hey buddy, I reckon I can still use that worm. What do you reckon? Look at that, worm and fish. Yeah, again, very average sized rainbow trout. Good stuff. Off you go fish, off you go worm. See if we can get another one.
Perfect worm fishing conditions, you reckon? Or fishing with worms, I should say. It's a bit wet, it's quite cold. It's winter time. I feel like, well, the water's fairly clear. But these fish would go after something that just stands out really obviously, like pink power bait, probably work really well. Um, whereas the worms being a natural bait, they wouldn't know what natural is. <laughs> Still seems to work. All right, I'm gonna change bait. I'm gonna put on some of this pink power bait. Now, cause it's under a float, you only want a really small amount. Normally with power bait, you'll fish it on the bottom and you'll put enough on the hook so that the hook floats. Um, but because you're under a float, kind of do the opposite. You'll put, put a small amount on so the hook stays underwater. Uh, they might take it off the, sur off the surface, but uh, you probably want that to be a couple of foot underwater. Boom. If bites you already. Oh no. Yep. No. Oh, I missed him. How about you come off? Oh, straight away bites on the power bait. It's going to be very obvious in this quite clear water. Um, and these fish should probably hone in on that power bait. It's always a good bait for stocked trout. Ooh, good bite. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Yep. Yep. Oh, I need to tighten that drag. We. Oh no, he got off with that jump. Oh, they seem to be liking the power bait. Oh, tightening the drag and he jumped and got off. So the reason why I've kept the float on and not put a sinker on and used the power bait on the bottom is because I just think watching the float is just a lot more interesting than waiting for the nibbles. It's just a bit more exciting I think watching that float go down, watching the little nibbles on the float. Just personal preference though but Bites you ready. Come on. Yes. Oh. I don't know. I don't want to go to any conclusions, but this feels bigger. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because you've got a bigger float. I reckon it's a bigger float. <laughs> anyway, it's a nice little rainbow trap. Either way. Hey, come on, buddy. Wee. Oh. Off you go. There we go, power bait under the float. Works a charm. Alright. A small one. Okay. Oop. Okay. Another power bait one. That's what number. Jump over there. Number six or something. I don't know. Been doing all right. Fair way to go before get to the uh, record number of fish I've caught here, which is 16. Uh, 
side, but we're on our way. Yeah, ooh. Is that a bite? <laughs> yeah. Little bites. Come on. Swimming. Yes! Whee! Coming towards me now. See that? Like a barramundi jump, that one. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. Oh. Now... Oh, gee. So, if anyone watching this doesn't use a net, I've got no idea why you wouldn't. <laughs> it's very difficult. Anyway, I've just survived today on the top of his face get out but yeah so I wouldn't deliberately not use your net off the goes <laughs> hard work anyway there we go and a few runs on the board now Alright guys, that's a wrap from me today. Caught lots of little fish. Trying to get this one in. Um, but yeah, basically that was just a bit of... Um, kind of to show you what uh, other states are doing in terms of stocking of fish and things like that. Um, and probably there's a few areas that Tasmania can improve in my opinion. So I hope you enjoyed the episode guys. Um, and until next time, I hope to see you out on the water, wherever that may be.